Welcome back to Ride and Glide Tutorials. Today, we're gonna to be looking at some different types of suspension found on the most popular high-powered scooters in the UK. Helping me is our technician, Roger. First of all, we're gonna look at one of the most popular brands on the market, Kaboo. We're gonna be looking at the Mantis Pro model and the Wolf Warrior 2 model. First of all, we're gonna start with the Mantis Pro suspension. So, this is what the Mantis has front and back. I'm gonna pass it over to Roger just to explain how it compresses, how it rebounds, and just generally show you how it works. So there you go, Rog, Thank explain you. away. Okay, so this is a coil spring. In basic terms, this takes all the energy out of the bumps and the sharp objects as your wheels go over the terrain. It's very simple how this works. High impact, it absorbs all the way down. Low impacts, it just does short travel. It has limited travel because of the distance between the coils. And to control that on the maximum stroke, we have the bump stop. So as this compresses all the way down, it goes so far, and then the bump stop takes action and absorbs the last of the impact. So that's like a dampener? It dampener. acts as a damper, yes, to get rid of the, the very last yeah. stroke. But also it stops it from bottoming out. It stops it from bottoming out, yes. Okay, so that's the compression. So how does rebound work with this particular suspension? Well, this particular suspension doesn't have any rebound. It's purely controlled by the return of the spring. What, so as the spring goes down, then it just bounces All the back. energy goes down and it just comes back again without S any valving, any hydraulic. So if you were riding something, nothing. how would that affect? Uh, Basically, like if you went over a two inch bump, it would compress and then it would just release and you'd probably go two inches higher over the object. Right, okay, so, so what, it would not, literally spring off the ground. It's not a controlled spring, so it won't be a controlled ride. It won't be a smooth ride. Following on from the Mantis Pro, we're gonna be looking at the Wolf Warrior 2, still made by Kaboo. At the rear, it has two springs, much like the uh, Mantis Pro, but they're slightly shorter, so two next to each other at the rear. At the front, however, it has a very different suspension. It has twin forks, so two of these. I'm gonna hand this over to Roger, and he's gonna to explain to you how the fork works. Okay, so this is a shock absorber front fork leg. Basically, this is a body with a spring inside it, or maybe a series of springs between high and low and medium compression with a stanchion which slides up and down which acts as a piston against the spring. So as impact happens... Yes, that the stanchion goes up, yeah. compresses against the springs. What, and they're preset, are they? They're preset. Sometimes there's just one spring yeah. on a basic shock. Sometimes they may have two or three different springs in there, different spring rates. Okay. And is it adjustable? So can I adjust This it? one is not adjustable. Okay, no. so that's a preset, exactly how it is. Yep. Get. But you can no. get them adjustable if it was a different... You can get stuff. them yeah. fully adjustable, you can get okay. them oil damped. Okay, so this isn't oil damped? This would be no, small, this is oil lubricated. Okay. It's just to reduce the friction. Okay, so would you class that? So where would you use this type of suspension or where should you use this type of suspension? Where would it be useful? Is um, this for basic or is this advanced? For, it's good for on the road, it's good off-road but you're very limited to the terrain, as in how bumpy the terrain's going to be. So it's not going to absorb a lot of the... It won't, impact. and speed will have a big difference. Okay, as in... The, the more speed, the more compression, the more energy, the greater the release. So okay. the faster you go, the higher you will climb. So again, when we talked about rebound with the previous mention, this has got no real dampening in it, the rebound it here, right? No, when, when the suspension gets compressed, all yeah. the energy has to go somewhere, and it is not controlled, so it will just be like, Exploding here, yeah, go on. What's that thing they called where you bounce up and down? A pogo stick. Like a pogo stick. Okay, so, is that, so, so it's basically the same as that, as in it yep. compresses, and then nothing stopping it from nothing rebounding. Nothing stops back. the energy from okay. coming back at you. No. Okay, all right. So moving on from the Kaboo suspension, we're now gonna move on to the Dualtron suspension. This is in the form of a cartridge. I'm gonna pass it over to Roger, and he's gonna explain a bit more about how it works. Okay, so basically, this is a cartridge, a sealed unit, Inside you have an axle with a square block inside it with square edges which act against polyurethane bushes. So what, these are colourful things here are polyurethane bushes? Those are polyurethane which come in different compounds okay. between firm and soft. Okay, so how's the actual turning, you know, how's the actual suspension? So the actual outside is locked, right. it doesn't move. Okay. The axle rotates just a few degrees either way. Okay, what, so as, they, as you compress the arms, that's turning the axle slightly. Yes, yeah, so the arms will go up and down, yeah. which turns the axle, which in effect pushes against these polyurethane bushes, 
navigates with square edges. Right, okay. Inside the axle, okay. and that's what gives you your suspension. Okay, so we have a few different colors here, so they come in, in numerous colors. So just explain to us why, you know, what the differences are. Well, the different colors gives you different compounds between soft, medium, and firm, which right. gives you a soft, medium, and firm ride. Okay, so, so if it's a softer one, it is much more yeah, much spongy. more forgiving yeah. over smaller bumps, okay. but it will not be, be able to absorb the larger bumps. Okay, and then so the harder suspension, better for flat, smooth. It is, yeah. or the harder suspension would be for smooth, fast rides or yeah. hard hitting objects. Okay, oh, okay, that's really interesting. So it's completely. For jumping, hard hitting objects. Okay, yeah. So it's completely different to anything else that we've spoken about. Totally, yes. It, I've also heard that these can be changed out. You can change these out, not just replace them with a new cartridge, you can actually take these out yep. and push new ones, that's yep. possible. So it's low maintenance? Low maintenance, yep. Okay, so the benefits of this type over, say, this type, are you can change it to a, to a different type of suspension. It, what about rebound? Because we know there's not really any rebound here. The rebound is pretty much controlled by the polyurethane bushing. Okay. So as it compresses, it will also decompress. Yeah. And the softer the polyurethane, yeah. the easier it is to compress. Yeah and the easier it is to decompress. So will that still spring back at the same rate that it compresses? It'll have the same quality in return. Okay, so it could be sort of soft and sort of... Soft yeah. and plush so it's and not, mellow. Right, it can okay. be real firm and bumpy and harsh. Okay, that's Depends really interesting. Depends on the polyurethane bushing. So moving on from the Jultron suspension, we saw the cartridges. We're now going to move over to the coil type suspension. So quite different from the coil suspension we looked at earlier. So this was the Kaboo suspension. Now you're looking at suspension that you'll find on maybe the Zero uh, models or the new Vasset models, the 10 Plus or the 10X for the Zero. I'm gonna pass it over to Roger and he's gonna tell you a bit about how it works. Okay, so this is a coil over shock. It compresses under impact and releases without any shock absorbing effect. So it's a very basic design. So it's the same as that? Same as that, but with a shock absorber body, Okay. without the valving. Okay, so if it had the valving, yeah. that would have a fluid in it or something? Yes, or air it or... would be a coil over with a shock absorber. Okay, so like the rear suspension on the Vissette 10 Plus or like the new Nami Burn E, they have hydraulic coilover shocks on yes. them. So that would be dampened. So you, can, be you would dampened. be able to adjust them? You can adjust the rebound and the compression. Okay, whereas this, you this, can't? No. What goes down comes back up with very limited control. So again, when you were talking about these or the other suspensions, it's going to bounce you rather than... Yeah, if you go over two inch bump, you're probably going to go two inches high. Okay, so the Zero's uh, range are known as quite an advanced suspension in the market right. compared to things like this, but is there actually much difference between the two? Between this and the yeah. hydraulic or well, between, between these, these two? two? The difference between these two is this has its own supporting mechanism okay. as in the shock body. Whereas that's the only supporting mechanism. This just has this with a bolt that goes through the centre okay. just to hold it in situ. So there is um, a bit more advancement in this than there is in that, but you still yeah, can't bit, yeah. control that like you could if it was a, a hydraulic shock. That's right, everything is controlled by the shock absorber. So moving on from the coilover shock, we're going to move on to the air shock. This is found on the rear of the 10X Limited and also on the Kingston KS18, which Roger rides himself. Now, Roger, how does that differ from the other suspension? Tell us a bit about it. So this is an air suspension. It has an air canister, which is controlled by air pressure, which goes in through the valve, which gives you your sprung loading suspension. Very similar to the coilover, but it just has air pressure inside the canister. Okay, so that's compression. Now yeah. I've heard the term um, progressive compared yes. to whereas a coil is a linear. Can you just explain yeah. the difference there? So progressive is throughout the travel, it gets firmer and firmer and firmer to the end point. And on a linear suspension, it has the same amount of pressure throughout the whole stroke. Okay, so it takes the same amount of pressure to compress from there to there as it does from there to there on a linear, yes. like a coil. Whereas on a progressive. progressive suspension, it's easier at first and then you can... It gets firmer and firmer towards the end of the stroke, that's and you, right. Can you change that yourself with this type you of suspension? You can change that through one, adding the pressure, the PSI pressure, okay. which gives you essentially a firmer ride. And then you can control that pressure, that suspension, through the damping, which is through the shock absorber. So there's a shock absorber in here as well? There is inside, yes. Okay, so this one has a damper built in. It does, it has a shock absorber. Yeah. which has rebound valving, which controls the, the, the return rate 
Okay, so for me, in layman's terms, that means if I press something down, the return rate is how fast it goes into the ribbon. How, how fast, fast it returns. Yes. Okay. And that's what gives you a quality ride over okay. the Okay, so that's a, um, a more technical suspension than the ones we've talked about so Without far. Without a doubt, yes. This is definitely the best way to go for suspension. Okay, what does this blue lever do here? This here, essentially, is just a valve. It goes from lockout, which closes the valve, which stops any movements inside the suspension. Right. So it's Why would you need to do that, though? Lockout, you use that basically to stop any bobbing when you're going uphill. Okay. So all the energy goes into the tyre. Oh, I see what you mean. So you're not bouncing. You don't lose hill. it through yeah. the suspension. Yeah. And then you go to trail or downhill. So then if you're going a bit more bouncing. you're going tire. fast, downhill or over yeah. big bumps. When you need it. That's okay. That's right. So it's a quick, easy way of just clicking a, clicking a switch rather than turning a dial. Okay. So I, I've seen these in different sizes before. So how does that, you know, how does a larger one make a difference to a smaller one, for example? You have a long stroke and a short stroke. Okay. You also have different volume canisters in diameter. So some are fatter, some are a larger diameter, some are smaller diameter, which gives you more compression or a longer stroke and different quality of compression throughout that stroke. Oh, okay. So so we can't actually get very, very technical when it comes to this type you of You do, stroke. yeah. But different size canisters is like having a different size spring. Okay, so when we, we were talking about the uh, suspension on, say, the Mantis Pro or on the rear of the Wolf Warrior, yeah. compared to, say, this, which is on the back of the 10X Limited, or so the KS18, yeah. that's a very different thing that you're dealing with from one of that's them to right. the other. This you can tune. Much more this advanced. This one you can't. Okay, yeah. so we're going from sort of very basic suspension to a much more advanced suspension. Now I'm sure this goes on and on and on with suspension. There are plenty of other types. It goes on forever. But for now, the ones that we're looking at, which are used on common high-end scooters in the UK, this is a very good idea of what you're going to find. Thank you for watching the tutorial. I hope you found it interesting and there's some useful information in there. Thanks to Roger for explaining a bit about the suspension. I don't know a lot about it, so it's nice to speak to someone who's a bit more technical. Um, just as an overview, we saw this on the Mantis front and rear of the Mantis Pro. The same thing on the rear of the Kaboo Wolf Warrior, but just shorter, there's double. Front of the Kaboo Wolf, we had the piston, didn't we, the very long arms. There's two of them on the front. Moving on to the very different design of the cassette suspension that we saw on the Jultron. The coil of the Zero 10X and a few other models as well, uh, the front of the Bisset 10 Plus. And then that actually saying that, that the hydraulic version of that they have on the rear of the Bisset 10 Plus and also the Nami, Bernie and others. So that's more advanced still. And then we came on to the air shock suspension, which from my point of view, the way Roger was describing it, is um, much more tweakable to make it perfect how you want to ride. So we've gone from the sort of uh, most simple suspension to a more advanced suspension. As Roger said, on the market there are plenty of other types of suspension. They can be swapped out between some models, but we've given you a really good overview of the basic suspension that you're going to find on high-end scooters in this country. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like the video, subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out content on EUCs, e-skateboards, e-scooters, e-bikes, one wheels. There's something for everyone on there. If you've got any more questions, comment down below and we'll try and get one of the technicians to get back to you. If you need any, any more information on any products that we sell, come to the website www.rideandglide.co.uk. Give us a call, give us an email, send us a live chat. We're always available to talk. Come down for a demo. We've got plenty of products in stock and someone is always available to come and have some fun outside of one of the products with you. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.